Hello again, welcome to The Ref Show. Mark Lawrenson and Roger Dilks are our experts in the studio this week. Something I must say, gentlemen, I've been longing to see for ages. Not just one, but actually two goals scored in the Premier League while players are lying supposedly injured. We'll come on to that. Lots of incident, lots of mistakes. But Lauro, first of all, suitable punishment for a manager pushing a match official. What do you reckon? Um, well, I think there's been precedent set before, which I think Paul Ince got five games. And I noticed that, didn't he go and say, sorry straight away, Wenger, but won't make any difference. Well, it'll still be down in the report. So I just think touchline ban, I don't see the point in, in stopping going to this, stop him going to the ground. You can get around that, can't you, as a manager? We're talking Arsene Wenger. I'm sure you realise that. There was an incredible finale to Arsenal's 2-1 win in the end uh, against Burnley and Wenger gets sent off for pushing the fourth official, Anthony Taylor. Well, in fact, that's in the act of removing him. He's being sent off anyway by John Moss. Keith Hackett's written a column arguing, look, we've got to stand up here and protect grassroots officials. What do you say, Roger? Well, it's in vogue at the moment, isn't it? Grassroots um, abuse of officials. Uh, officials being um, accosted, etc., etc., and we can't have it on prime time television uh, on a Sunday afternoon, and uh, a senior manager in the Premiership getting away with it. So obviously the FA are going to be looking into this very, very seriously, and I agree with uh, with Mark. Um, he, he's probably going to get a, a serious ban here. But should it be more than a touchline ban? If it's a stadium ban, it's, you know, it's a major inconvenience and a deterrent, isn't it? Is it not? I don't think, I don't think it's a de deterrent. Because they can, they can get the feed somewhere. You can soon pipe the feed in to watch the game. Yeah. And it can be on a mobile phone or whatever to the coaching staff. I don't, I don't really see the point in that. Okay. I think Jose's had a couple of them, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Didn't, yes. didn't seem to be any great problems no. to Jose, yeah. did he? No, no not at all. He might have like even it. watched one in a skip. At one time, <laughs> he? I think he did. <laughs> um, but the duty to officials lower down? Yeah, yeah, exposed? No, it's very, very important. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's, the, it's not the fact that, because he, he pushed the official, it's just the fact that, you know, that it just says to everybody that you can touch the officials. You cannot. No. You really, no. seriously cannot. Okay, John Moss was the official here. You, you can't say this guy isn't prepared to make big calls, and, and perhaps most of them are correct as well. He's actually had a couple of good games lately yeah. in a decent You said run. that with a little bit of hint of surprise yeah. in your, yeah. your voice, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I possibly did. I mean, he's mentioned in this studio a lot, and often adversely, so it's, 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 it's good to redress the balance. But there was a mixture here. Yeah, there, there was a mixture, and, um, you know, he had some big calls to make. Uh, I watched his body language, and... Towards the end of the game, he, he wanted to get off the pitch. There's no two ways about that, that's for sure. But um, in terms of, of the whole game, um, he, he missed a penalty early on for Arsenal. For, for Arsenal. And that probably set the, uh, the tone on the uh, touchline. Uh, but after that, the other um, big decisions he, he made were absolutely correct. I mean, Xhaka getting sent off for a two-footed lunge. Again. Again. Yeah. Again. I mean, this guy has got a serious problem yeah. in yeah. terms of tattling and, and the coaching staff need to get a grip of him. The two penalties are, are kind of correct, but there's a guy offside for the Kishelny. Arsenal one. Kishelny's yeah. off. Yeah. It's close, isn't it? It's tight. Mm. It's, it's tight, but you're off, you're off, you're yeah. on, you're, and if you're on, you're on. Yeah. Yeah. It's a millimetre or a hundred, whatever. It's just, it's yeah. the way that it is. But yeah. And yeah. I can understand Sean Dyche as well. And he, he's, by the way, one, I think one of the better with, yes. with, with officials yeah. as well. But he's just, yeah. he's sat there for the game yeah, yeah. and he's thinking he's going to get gonna get a point. They've had one point away all season yeah. at Manchester United. You think, yeah. whoa, yeah. now we've got a point at Arsenal. And then, of course, bang. You've, you've got right. a feel for him, yeah. haven't you? Neil Swarbrick, who you know well, uh, yeah. and, and you rate as a, as a referee, as, as do, do, do most of our expert panellists. Chelsea 2, Hull 0. Right. Just skipping through, because we've got loads to get through here. Penalties not given to, to both sides, in the view of our experts here, that sh should have been awarded. But the big talking point, obviously, and, and sadly as well, and best wishes, by the way, to Ryan Mason, yeah. who fractured his skull in a sickening clash of heads with Gary Hale, Cahill. That was early on. Now, Ryan Mason's been operated on you know, his condition is stable. stable. So we wish him all the best. But the prompt action there of the referee, Neil Swarbrick. Yeah, I think Neil's reaction to the clash of heads was absolutely superb. And um, he deserves all the praise that anyone can give him for stopping the game immediately and handing it over to the medical staff. 
and as we saw on TV, there were quite a number of medical staff mm -hmm. around, and that tells you straight away there is something serious here. Yeah. It's, it's like you know, though, don't you? Yeah. You know yeah, straight, you can be yeah. 50 yards over, you yeah. just know. And, yeah. and we, we were always told as players, don't go anywhere near anybody. No. no. Because I remember Jim Beglin badly broke his leg in a tackle with Gary yeah. Stevens, Everton, Liverpool. And I just went over straight away. I wish I'd never gone over it. Mm. One, one leg was going to Wapping and the other one was yeah. going to Norway. Which mm. affects your performance, well, your state of mind. Well, that's the whole thing, because in anything, and am I going to tackle? Yes. What am I going to do? But, oh. but the referee, of course, has to go yeah, and yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. Is, does that affect his performance, uh, maybe on this occasion? It, it can do. It can do. Um, different guys deal with situations in different yeah. ways. Yeah. So it's impossible to say, yes, it did affect his performance. Um, but there were a couple of uh, incidents in the game, which you've referred to. Um, but good on him on the day. He got through the game and um, we, we've got a lot of time for Neil and uh, he, he deserves more games at the top level. Right. Good on two other referees as well. This was Anthony Taylor the day before the uh, Emirates experience that he had, the uh, confrontation with Wenger. Referee in Crystal Palace Everton decided by uh, an Everton goal while a player was, was lying injured off the field, Geoffrey Schloop, uh, who, who tr then tried to get on the field to stop the game. Didn't succeed. Goal was scored. And then we saw Bournemouth and Watford, the 2-2 draw, with a Watford player only slightly hurt. You saw this, uh, I did. Mark. Uh, goes down in a bid to get the game stopped while the he move... He had cramp, Alan. Yeah. Hey? He had it, cramp. Cramp? Yeah. And Bournemouth equalised 2-2. Two -two. Good on him. Mm. Hey? Yeah. But I loved, I loved the reaction of two of, his, two of his colleagues who went over to him and said, you muppet, yeah. why on earth did you do that? Because yeah. if he just stood there, cramp or no cramp, yeah. the ball arguably wouldn't have been played alongside him and create the chance. Yeah. yeah. What a st stupid, idiotic thing. But also, I'm just wondering and, and hoping that this stops so many unnecessary stoppages. Difficult call for referees, are players seriously hurt or not? But, you know, players are putting their professionals in je fellow pros in jeopardy, aren't they, by feigning? You yeah. hate it. Yeah. You yeah. hate it. So I think it's horrible. I just really think it's cheating for me. Mm. Yeah. Yes, it is. But it's, it's putting a lot of responsibility on the referees. Well, so it, well it is. Unnecessary responsibility. Yeah. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. But yeah. in these two incidents at weekend, there were no problems with the players, no. No. you know, and, you know, let the game flow. I mean, I think, don't you think the other thing now, though, is that even now the players are aware, hardly anyone kicks a ball out. Mm. Because no. it is just the referee. It's taken a long time for people to realise yeah. it's the referee's yeah. decision. Yes. So you just keep playing. Yeah, that's right. Otherwise, you'd be constantly... Even when their own team's got the yeah, ball. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know. Otherwise, you'd be constantly, you know, just kicking the ball out. Uh, I'm going to get short shrift in part two when I put the Marco Van Basten suggestion on behalf of FIFA about scrapping the offside law to our gentleman here in the studio, I'm sure. Uh, but just to round up part one, because we've got some major incident in, in, in part two, including, you know, one or two people saying, hey, players have got to go down in order to win penalties. If they're fouled, they that must really go down, you know. I mean, I hate to hear that being urged. Yeah, though. but if you if you if you foul and you foul and you fall over, it's a foul, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah. I always tell you the same story. Gary Lineker is signed for Barcelona from Everton and was told in the yeah. penalty area, you go over. Yeah. And they sort of they accept it. Yeah. We're a little bit at the moment. I think you get a lot of people kind of go, well, it's part of the game. Well, it shouldn't be. But I'm afraid it's, it's getting to be part yeah. of the game. It's a nightmare. It is a nightmare. I'm very confusing. But no major issues in this game, these games, just to kind of wrap up. Major issues, no, I think. Martin Atkinson, West Ham's win at uh, Middlesbrough 3-1. Kevin Friend, again, mm -hmm. uh, in form. My word, you don't want to talk about this. Liverpool 2, Swansea 3. I was there, on. And you're right, I don't want to talk about it. What's next? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Michael, hey, the ref had a good game. Yeah, he did. Yep. Yeah, he did. Good. Well, we, we have talked about that. Michael, <laughs> Michael Oliver, uh, Southampton three, Leicester nil. Um, despite I think one poor offside call was there a penalty award maybe uh, should have been a red for a denial. I've got a note here. Yeah, the um, the um, situation where Long is um, going into the penalty area clear through on goal yeah. and Morgan pushes him away. Yeah. Well, that's a red card. Mm -hmm. It's a penalty and it's a red card. He should have left him because he didn't it, score anyway. And that, that was the basic <laughs> yeah. point. You yeah. know, he had every chance of missing because yeah. um, he's got a good goalkeeper well, look, against him as well. Yeah, but he's but also got a poor goal scoring record. Yeah. That's a rare down mark on Michael Oliver lately, but there's yeah. lots, lots more in the second half. Rejoin us, folks, for that.
A player takes a knock and develops a persistent nosebleed. After seven minutes of treatment, you wave him back on. But in his first challenge for the ball, you see he's still bleeding. You demand he is substituted, but his manager refuses. What do you do?